Oh, it should work. Yes. OK. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about access to data and indicators. Um, so the first question we have to ask ourselves is, what are we looking for? Uh, and that has been mentioned yesterday and also this morning. So we're looking for uh, observations. I'm used to have a microphone. I can move. It's nice. Um, so observations or measurements about the environment, about the, uh, the ecosystem uh, status, state functions, uh, about society, economy, and governance. Also, we talked about uh, we need simple indicators or proxies uh, that are derived from direct uh, observations or sometimes from climatologies. And we also need some complex indicators that are computed from several observations, several independent ones. So uh, what I want to show you today uh, are workflows that exist to access environmental monitoring data and indicators, workflows that exist for molecular, biodiversity, and ecological data, uh, workflows for socioeconomic data, which is a totally new thing for me. I'm, I'm not used to uh, dealing with that sort of data or fetching that sort of data. So that was new for me as well to uh, look for where to get that sort of data. And when I talk about workflows, maybe you don't see that. Uh, by workflow, I mean established uh, an established process to acquire, aggregate, quality check, and serve data. So there are some established workflows to do that. Uh, but the, the fourth point that I want to discuss is outside the workflows, and that's the, the, the real exciting one, for me at least. Uh, where that's where data management works with uh, science projects to come up with grassroots initiatives uh, to, to really address what are the gaps in the data that we need, uh, what do we need and it's not provided in the workflows, and then how do we manage to, uh, to get that uh, going and to... Uh, the workflows are not uh, able to deal with complex uh, types of data. So we need, at the moment, we need to find ways outside the workflows. And eventually, maybe we'll be able to make it uh, more operational. Um, yes, so I'll start with the first one. I decided to uh, walk you through uh, how to access data. So I'll be using the online uh, access. And so we'll use the internet and hopefully it will uh, be gentle with us. So workflows for uh, monitoring data. Uh, I'll come up with examples mainly from Europe, uh, uh, United States and Australia. Uh, so in Europe, in the workflow to really generate the data and channel it to be able to quality check the data and serve it. Uh, there's a network of national oceanographic data centers, uh, and there's a network called CDataNet. And the aim of CDataNet is to bring all the, net, the data centers on uh, the same, with the same language, the same standards, so that all the data can be comparable. And that's happening quite well for physical uh, data, chemical data. But then again, the biology is a challenge. So that's the network. What we'll do with all the websites, so for most of them, I have a link. Um, I'll have the presentation on a USB key so that we can circulate it to the different working groups this afternoon. So if you need to use the links, if you think you can use some of these uh, uh, websites to fetch data for your uh, working group, then you can, uh, you can get that from the presentation. So in Europe, CDataNet is a network, and it feeds into uh, the operational oceanography uh, portal, which is called MyOcean. And if we go to MyOcean, yep. so you can select your data products so these are usually gridded maps. They could be regional, they could be global. Uh, and then you can select them by area. So you have 
you might find areas that are useful for you. You can uh, filter them by parameters. Again, as I said, mainly physical, chemical parameters. Time coverage, uh, some forecast products, uh, near real time, but mainly multi-year products. So climatologies uh, where you can get time series of some, uh, some parameters. Invariant products are mainly uh, anomalies. And then you can filter by observations or models. You can fetch uh, satellite data. We can look at, uh, yes, let's pick this one. Should be fast. And then it describes you the different data products. And you can simply add it to your cart and download the data product. So that's one source. But that's mainly, it's well defined for European water bodies, but they also have uh, several products that are global. Uh, then in Australia, you have IMOS, uh, the Integrated Marine Observing, uh, Observing System, uh, which has, so it fetches data and it, uh, you can access it through that website. Again, you have, in this case, uh, many regional products, some global products. Uh, and then they, you have to visit the different uh, websites. If you are interested in global products, you can find them in most uh, places, in my ocean, in Australia, or in the next one that I'll show you. But it's the same principle where you can filter by the different parameters or by geographic areas, or by time slots. In the USA, you have the IOS, Integrated Ocean Observing System, same principle. Uh, directly on IOS, surprisingly, uh, I couldn't find an easy way to get the data products, uh, even though there's a something called data there. Uh, it's not that easy to get it. I, we, if you, it, it, I don't know how to get that, and I would need to uh, look into it. But most of these products you can actually find at uh, the National Oceanographic Data Center in, in the US. So again, that's a usual source, a common source of data where you find the most common one, the most huge one, I say, in our world, is the World Ocean Database, which provides raw data, raw profiles, uh, physical, chemical, and also biological data. Uh, the other one that is widely used is the World Ocean Atlas, this one. Uh, these are climatologies, and if you go there, you can select your parameter, and then you can download. So you have annual uh, gridded products, seasonal ones, monthly ones, and sometimes you can even specify uh, if you want a, a specific uh, layer or region or a specific uh, time period. Okay, that's it for the monitoring data, which is well organized usually uh, the data is collected in a usually systematic way, and then it's uh, quality checked, and it's made into data products that are uh, well easy to use. Then we go to workflows for molecular biodiversity and ecological data, and that's where it's, uh, it's a bit more messy because we're measuring many different things in many different ways, and it's more, a lot more difficult to standardize. Uh, we'll start with the easiest which is molecular data. Uh, easiest because the data themselves are not too complicated. They're just sequences. Uh, at the basic, they're just sequences. And also because they have a, a very nice system uh, of archiving all the sequences. And they have, because it's a recent uh, discipline, they organized it well from the beginning. 
Uh, so they organized it with the journal publishers, for example. So when you publish a paper with molecular data, you are obliged to deposit the data in, a, in an archive. So that's a, that's a big plus. You don't have data, uh, data centers do not have to hunt for the data. Scientists have to do it in order to publish, otherwise the paper is not accepted. And also they have organized three different data centers, uh, one in the US, one in Europe, and one in Japan, and they replicate themselves. So they are, you have three replicates of the full uh, sequence database in the world. So it's fully replicated, it's fully accessible, and the data flows in. Uh, the thing is, then you have databases with lots of sequences, and it's not so easy to, uh, to extract information. Uh, bioinformaticians find ways to do that. Uh, for us, it's a lot more difficult. There are some tools. In the US, you have uh, Camera, which was funded by the Moore Foundation. Uh, I don't have the website, but if you look for Camera, uh, Moore Foundation, you'll find it. In Europe, there's Megex, which is uh, a new one. Uh, well, it's, it, it's old, but there's a new version which is much more useful. Um, where you have... Okay, so you can display uh, sequences available, you can filter the search, and then you have information about each sequence and the contextual data. And yes, again, they have a basket system, so you can pick the samples that you need and you can download all the information. But still, fetching the information is not uh, that easy for us. For bioinformaticians who really go in a programmatic way, uh, they go into the uh, NCBI or ENA and they, they fetch what they want, it, it, that's the easiest way. So an easy to use interface for us is not yet there and they need to, to make these. Um, now, if we think in terms of molecular data, time series of molecular data, which is something we might be looking for, uh, that's one example, that's from the L4 station in the UK where you have lots of environmental parameters uh, that they follow. Uh, well, that's a climatology, so it's a monthly, monthly averages, I believe, that they have. The, the L4, they do, they measure, uh, uh, well, they sequence the bacteria every month. So you have a nice time series. That's the, about the only one. Uh, and so S here is a, uh, biodiversity index, the Shannon. So that's the about the only very nice time series uh, that you can uh, find. But now uh, there's the genomic observatories that's coming up. Um, and the first action was the OSD, the Ocean Sampling Day, which happened uh, last uh, 21st of June, uh, made up by one of the uh, an EU project. So you have about uh, 150 sites in the world that have measured on the same day uh, exactly the same thing using the same method. So that will generate a very nice uh, data set, a map of uh, biodiversity based on molecular data. And that should be the basis for the genomic observatories. So if funding is available, then uh, that time series should start and continue from, uh, for, for many years now. So, it's coming up. Lots of gaps, yes, but, but that's, uh, all the sampling was done uh, on a voluntary basis by the different institutes. So 150 was quite surprising as a start for the first, uh, first time but there are a few, uh, lots of gaps, but it's based on uh, shore measurements. Uh, yes. Well, you have other initiatives. That, 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 that's on a, 
uh, observatory level, the same way that uh, uh, they measure temperature, salinity, and sea, height, uh, sea level uh, in the different, uh, uh, well, observatories, coastal observatories, yes. But that's not the only data. But that, that will get us closer to operational uh, measurement of uh, diversity based on molecular data. Yes. For that? Yeah. Provide the samples. Black Sea would be IBSS mm -hmm. in Ukraine. Uh, the other ones are the. Uh, the main why well, I don't know them by by heart, but they are usual partners in EU projects. Uh, do they still in the in the stack, or it, it's the the project still operational, or they it, it's frozen uh, due to recent uh, changes? Well, what do as you I know? Said, okay, so Microbe Three is a EU project with partners, uh, much less partners than the you have stars there, uh, but the participation of the uh, marine stations was voluntary. Mm -hmm. So they simply joined, so IBSS joined and the other ones joined on a voluntary basis. Uh, but all the sequences was paid by the project. And uh, that's where money issues come for the future. If we want to keep up that observatory, then we need to find funding for sequencing. Yep. Uh, another big one for biodiversity uh, is OBIS. Uh, you probably know that one. And that you can get, uh, well, they have, that gives you an overview. This is the number of records in OBIS and the number of species, and that's in a biodiversity index. But you have to understand that in OBIS, it's mainly presence absence. They have records of where a species was observed. They won't have abundance. They won't have biomass. They won't have... So that, that's part of the, uh, the data that's missing at the moment uh, in these. So OBIS is excellent if you want to, you can compute uh, biodiversity indexes. If you want to have presence absence, it's also excellent. Uh, but then if you're interested in biomass or abundance, it's, uh, it's not there. Amonnet uh, is the European network uh, that is being set up to provide environmental data to policymakers. Uh, it's a new one. Uh, at the moment, yes, That's, that was a surprise. Uh, so may, at the moment, you can get uh, raw data as well as very nice uh, regional grid uh, data products of bathymetry, geology, seabed habitats, chemistry, biology, and physics. And it's now launched the uh, human activity one, which has no data at the moment, but that's uh, quite interesting that uh, they have that there. And it's the same as the other ones where you select your data product uh, for biology it's again, it's based on OBIS. It's developed by the same people as OBIS. So again, it's presence, absence. You don't have, you don't find abundance in biomass. Yes, you can use CDataNet. Oh yes, you can use CDataNet to uh, fetch raw observations, but also. Data products, uh, again, mainly uh, physical and chemical data. And they even mentioned that it's, uh, that it's meant to provide uh, data to Imber. It even mentions Imber. <laughs> so that's...
again, working with a basket system, uh, the delay to get your data is uh, a bit longer. So you couldn't, for example, today get uh, your data. You requests go to national data centers, and you sometimes have a delay of a uh, few weeks before you get actually the, the full data that you've requested. Pangea is another one which was mentioned by Eric. Uh, we can If we try what Eric was saying, parameter fish, let's say, in sediments, then you get what you get from Pangea, because it's a data publisher, you get citations, you get a list of citations of data sets, which is not easy to go through uh, if you want to, uh, to figure out. Well, you can, you can go through them and read. Uh, so you can get detailed uh, description and metadata about the data set. And you have a, a list of all parameters included. And you can download the data set online. Uh, but then it's you can use the warehouse if you want to build a climatology, if you want to really extract lots of data uh, globally. Or you could specify a region as well with a box. I need to log in. Then you get an idea of which parameters are in the 300 or something data sets. Then you can pick uh, the parameters that you want. No, we don't want water. We don't want water. We want sediments. And then it's uh, we want fish. So we have to. Oh, come on. Yeah, that's a list of all the parameters that are in the, the 300 data sets. But just to see, we're getting there. What we have on fish. So, you could select fish bones. Uh, and then fish remains in number, fish remains in milligram, fish teeth in number. And then you simply start the query, and you will get the. Uh, so that's a quer that an example of queries that you could run f in uh, your working group this afternoon if you want to, uh, to get some uh, global coverage or regional co uh, data. And then you simply get. This, oh, well. Well, 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 it's mainly, yeah, well. And so you get the data set with also, in this column, you get the DOI of the data set that comes from. And that's important. When you use data, you need to cite the, the origin of the data and uh, using DOIs when available. OK, workflows for socioeconomic uh, data and indicators. Uh, again, I start with uh, Europe. You have Eurostat. I won't go to the website, but you get this is an idea. So you have G GDP, uh, total population. So you have statistics about European countries. Uh, that's a very new one in Europe publicdata.eu, uh, which gives you, it's still not really populated with data at the moment, but it these are the, the fields, the type of parameters that you can get uh, data from. Uh, as I said, Emonet now has a, a human activity portal, which is empty, but it will be filled as a, in the next coming years. And then we get to the big ones, the FAO, which was mentioned several times. 
Um, okay, so you can select. You have a list of all the uh, the stats that are available. You can pick one, and then you have a choice of either getting the stats online, uh, which is usually you have to select to filter your data, and you can only get partial uh, data if you go online. It's much better to use the uh, fish stat to download the, uh, their software, and then you simply download the full database, and you on your computer you can uh, filter and search for the data. So that's the FAO. Uh, then you have the OACD. Uh, yes. Same idea when you get indicators and simply Again, you can download directly on the website. Uh, you can browse through the different uh, indicators that they have. That's another one, the International Monetary Fund, uh, which I don't need to go to. Again, it's quite straightforward with uh, downloading the, uh, they have a list, again, of the data products they have. ICPSR, that one will, again, you can browse by topic, uh, geography, or you can get global data, and then these are the types of indicators that you can get. Uh, that's a United States website, so you can get the statistics for the USA or for international, uh, well, nations other than USA. So that's an interesting one as, as well. And the World Bank, same principle. You have a list of indicators that you can download. Uh, interesting, they have the microdata library uh, because I was wondering, I asked around if there's, as a social scientist, when you generate uh, indicators or data, I was wondering if there was a, a system of archives, of data, data centers, where you can send your data uh, so that the data makes their way, may, makes the, their way to the, the big databases. And it seems not. But that's one, it seems that this is one way, that's one place where you could uh, submit the data, but I, I'm wondering uh, if you generate indicators or data, can you submit them somewhere? No. That that's and it's not missing, or is there a demand for it, or because at the, when you publish, you publish a paper, but you don't publish the data, the the supplementary data. Okay. But databases would be uh, useful, yes. Okay, now the interesting part outside the, the workflows. Uh, because as I said, the vast majority, uh, the vast majority of uh, biological and ecological data are not channeled in the workflows. Um, essentially because it's, it's too complex, too diverse in terms of parameters, and it's difficult to harmonize. Uh, one approach is to say we, we don't look at the existing data, we just think about the future, uh, and you set up, that's one expedition, the Tara Oceans expedition. Uh, the idea was to do a snapshot of the world ocean. Again, there, there are big gaps, I agree. Uh, but to go cover the world ocean with one vessel using the same protocols, the same methods, 
uh, and then generate uh, a consistent data set. Uh, Terra Oceans was a three year uh, expedition uh, doing physical chemical oceanography uh, and then looking at plankton from a morphological, more classical way and also molecular way, uh, doing a, a very thorough uh, analysis of the, uh, the plankton systems. And um, so that's one way to do it. Uh, it makes a good snapshot, it's a baseline, and then you can repeat it in uh, five years, 10 years time, and compare how uh, things are evolving. Um, so the beauty of it is that the data is comparable from all the stations. Uh, it's something that cannot be done with usual oceanographic vessels because it costs uh, way too much to bring a vessel for three years around the world. That's how oceanography was done uh, centuries ago. But it, it's still possible with a, a smaller uh, vessel, so a sail ship in this case. Uh, yes, that's the coverage from Terra. Uh, that's just as example, oxygen and nitrate. Okay, then comes the other approach is looking back at the data that exists. Uh, one of the grassroots uh, initiative is called Maridat. So it's, the idea is to build a world atlas of marine ecosystems uh, data. So that came from uh, the green ocean model community. Uh, so they got funding initially from the Eurotians project and then uh, from other projects. So they are modelers and they had need for uh, observational data to uh, parameterize their models and to validate their models. So they went into uh, a lot of work to fetch data from existing databases and to create data products for diatoms, phaeocystis, coccolithophores, uh, the nitrogen fixers, uh, picophytoplankton, uh, macrozooplankton, meso, microzooplankton, theropods, forams, and bacteria, all pelagic. And so they collected uh, the raw observations and then they did gridded products uh, to match the, the, the grid of the World Ocean Atlas. So it's a one degree grid. So that's available uh, online. It's published, it's a special issue, a joint special issue between uh, the data journal, Earth System Science Data. That's something you should visit uh, to, f to find out about new data products that are being published. Uh, so it was a joint special issue between that journal and Pangea. Uh, so the data, because the, the journal doesn't host the data products doesn't host the data sets, so they need uh, data archives to do that. Uh, if you go to Pangea, then you find these, uh, the 12 data sets uh, for the, so they are NetCDF files for each of the group that I've shown. Uh, this in the same way uh, from Project Eurobasin, uh, again, modelers uh, needed some data, so they went into uh, uh, existing databases. So Patrick Liode looked at uh, Albacore, the North Atlantic, Albacore tuna. So that's a, a very good data product now. Uh, so it's spatially explicit estimates of stock size, structure, and biomass of the, the tuna. Uh, so they went back to the ICAT surveys and filled some gaps, corrected some uh, mistakes, uh, and then published the, uh, so it's published again in ESSD and the data is available at Pangea. Uh, Brian McKenzie did the same for uh, the bluefish, uh, the bluefin tuna, uh, based on ICs, uh, the, the ICs database, plus there were gaps, they had to go back to ICs reports and digitize data, fill the gaps, so it's, uh, again, it's quality assessed, quality uh, checked uh, data products. Uh, another example is this one, stomach contents of pelag uh, pelagic fish, so herring, mackerel, blue whiting, albacore, and bluefin tuna. Always in the North Atlantic because Eurobasin is specific to the, uh, it's a basin scale modeling of the North Atlantic. So again, that's uh, 
also available. Uh, it was mentioned as a needed data product. Now I need to plug myself in. Sorry. Beth, could you? Yep. It's dying. Okay, that's uh, work that was done in Eric's lab. So Olivier uh, Cartapanis. Uh, that was mentioned that data was extracted and uh, about that uh, sediment uh, data. That's opal concentration. And so they, they went back to databases, uh, extracted the data, quality checked them, uh, had to adjust for age models for the, the core data. So again, that's another example of uh, grassroots initiatives. Uh, people who need a specific data product and they go into the effort of, uh, because it's a huge effort, uh, you really need to, uh, to need the data to, do, to go through that. And so that, that the important thing is that these efforts well, these data products get published so that they are available to, uh, to others. Uh, and again, another one that was mentioned this morning, uh, the Darwin Project, so from Mick Follows, uh, that's, so it's uh, model data of plankton functional types distribution. Uh, in this case, the, the red is diatoms. So each color is a different uh, plankton functional type. So you get uh, distribution, worldwide distribution, uh, and also on the vertical of the different functional types, you can derive, he derives as well, uh, some biodiversity indexes. And that was quite uh, useful when we, with, with Tara, when we did a, a transect uh, between uh, Easter Island and Galapagos, we had a, a long journey and with Tara we can only sample a few uh, stations and we didn't know exactly how to select because the, the idea with Tara, Tara Oceans was to select distinct or well systems that have a distinct uh, signature. And we used uh, the output from Big Follows. We asked him to generate the, the transect with uh, biodiversity and the abundance of different functional types uh, on, well, along the transect, but also on the vertical. And that's how we selected the, uh, the sampling uh, stations. So it was quite useful. And it was interesting to see that we targeted some uh, stations where we predicted uh, high biodiversity depth at about 200 meters. And we indeed found uh, a deep chlorophyll maximum at 200 meters sitting on top of the uh, oxygen minimum zone. So that was quite impressive to, well, funny to find it. Okay, other uh, grassroots initiatives, but on the uh, social uh, science side. The Sea Around Us project was mentioned several times. Uh, it, yes, again, it provides uh, uh, data which can be filtered by EEZ or LME or at different uh, areas. This one is interesting, was pointed out by uh, Ingrid, uh, where it's more about uh, the perception of people. It's uh, results from surveys. Uh, oh. So questions like opinion of the United States, uh, well, you had, well, there was a summary somewhere, but, but it's opinion of people about questions. So they, they ask questions and you get the, I, I'm not showing the results. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So it, it's interesting. They don't have that many questions though. It's quite uh, limited, but it's, uh, yeah, 
It's fun. Yeah, that's how I cut the picture. <laughs> and indices. Um, and I have a question for Alida and Scott. I was looking for uh, indicators and data generated by indices. And of course, you can find it by ecosystem. If we pick uh, any. So the data is displayed. Is the data published somewhere, archived somewhere, available to the public? But for some of the countries that are involved in indices, the, go the data is government data, and they're not free to make it available to others. Okay. So we, we've talked about publishing the data in a, in a data journal, and we would like to do that, but so far we haven't had consensus. And so the short answer is no. Okay. Yeah. So at the moment, the only way is to look at the, uh, the, 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 the graphs. Yeah, and, and so they're, the, they're essentially derivatives of data. So these are the indicator. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and you could, um, I mean, if someone was interested in the data, they could approach the, the, each of these pages has names associated with it. And so you could approach the people directly. And most, particularly in the European and the American pl uh, case studies, the, the data probably will be made available. Yep. I think in some of the other countries where it's, it's a bit more problematic. That would be good. Okay, I'm down to final remarks. Mainly, well, essentially about the uh, the data available outside the workflows. Um, so, if you look at the existing databases, there's lots and lots of data. Uh, unfortunately when it comes to biological data, ecological data, it's highly fragmented, uh, either in different data sets. Uh, data sets use different uh, parameters, different units, different methods. Uh, so as I said, it requires lots of work to go through that and to, uh, to harmonize it. But it has to be done. Um, if you want to access compilations or indicators, there are f only a few available uh, and they, again, I mean the, not the, from the big databases, but the, for, like, for example, like indices. Uh, and they are usually tailored to answer specific questions. So we need, we need more of them. Uh, so I think that what we need, uh, first databases must tidy up. Uh, they must harmonize, put more effort into uh, harmonizing the units and the parameters so that we can integrate all the data. Uh, as I said, scientists mu must continue to work on compilations, even though it's huge work. At the moment, it's the only way to do it, so it has to be done. Uh, and we need more collaboration between uh, databases and scientists uh, to define what are the standards, because they usually standardization doesn't happen in the databases because we don't know exactly what should be the standard. So we need uh, more discussion. Uh, even among scientists to agree on which should be the, the standards. And yeah, so that's the only way to get, uh, if we get quality in, so if we get data in the same uh, uh, format, same units, then it will be much easier to get quality out. Uh, and that's, yes, thank you. Do we have any questions? Yes. What do you think about the Green Seas project future? Have you heard about it? Yes. Uh, because yeah, right. because when you mentioned the um, the the data is very unsolid, it's separated in the different areas. That was. Yeah, that was the point I faced with when I was uh, in the Greece, Green Sea as uh, summer school. 
So they provided us some data, but it was yeah, very separated. I'm not sure about the, stat the status of Green Seas. Uh, I think the project is finished, uh, and I haven't seen anything, but uh, I should look again. Yeah, they presented some uh, results in the EGU conference yep. in the spring, uh, but I'm not sure if uh, they collected some database. Was it transferred to some other projects, or was it published some some kind of? Because they've collected a lot of data, as I know. Okay. Well, they had lots of CPR data and the <coughs> continuous plankton recorder. Are they, are they, here? they had lots of uh, continuous plankton recorder data. Yeah. Yes. That that might be the main. Uh, contribution of that project, yep. if they make it available publicly. Yes. Well, one is the International Labour Organization, and so there they have uh, information, well, lots of data, but data about how many people are uh, employed in different types of occupations, and that's often broken down by sex, by age, by education, etc. And then a second one is uh, there's an occupational wages database, and again that's um, I can give you the, the 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 website for that, but that tells you average wages, and that's uh, broken down sometimes monthly, hourly, annually, and across different occupations. So depending on what the questions are and the geographic scope, that can provide some of the kinds of data that may be required for some of the kind of questions that are being okay. asked. If if you can, I'll email it to you. Yeah, so just as there's regional places to pull out environmental data, there's lots of regional places to pull out the human side of the system okay. as well. Is that uh, listed somewhere or...? There's no one central list, but if you go to your favourite search engine and look up like Malaysian treasury data, it's all there, or Australian or US or whatever. Okay. I'm using data from Pangea, yep. and recently I was giving one talk and somebody just asked me like, how far I can trust these data. So can I say right away that they, these are like quality data products? Or ah. Um, <laughs> you mean the raw data? Yeah. Okay, so. I mean, because being the, a modeler, the, the, we no, face no, no, this the, problem. The policy is, <laughs> so Pan Pangea uh, takes care of uh, the quality of the metadata. So information about the data. That's our responsibility. As far as the quality of the data itself, that belongs to the scientist who generated and submitted the data. So we, we get the data, we manage all the metadata, then before publishing it, we ask the author to check both the metadata and the data for quality, uh, and then it's published. We, we cannot judge on the... Uh, only when you move, when data is extracted and transformed into data products, that's where uh, you can expect uh, some quality check on the data itself. But, of course, the, the quality of the data is as good as you, the scientist uh, gave it in. Yeah. Yes. You have a microphone coming. Uh, the access to the iOS data, there is the... iOS. Uh, iOS. And you, oh, yes, the, you, yeah, you the, check that. The, the geoplatform.gov is, is, is pretty new. It's like one month that is out. It's using the CSW OGC standard yes. to harvest data from other uh, databases. And uh, I know that iOS, iOS data are there. Okay. So can be used. And uh, the Bicodemo database from yes. the GUI is another uh, good source for global data. Yeah, Bicodemo is quite good. They, they do the, uh, for all research funded by NSF in the ocean science, uh, 
it's required that the data goes to Bicodemo for quality check, and then it uh, it flows to the national data center. That's yeah. the the usual workflow for data in yeah, US. They need to standard the metadata in yeah. order to uh, yeah. make them available. Yeah. Uh, USGS use a lot the Threads server to serve uh, climate data. So there we have like uh, the FBCOM, ROMs, they are linked to this uh, service online. Okay. Uh, I should uh, add the link. Any other question, comment? If not, we'll go for lunch. <laughs> <laughs>